Hi guys, so um, I wanted to go on here right now and go over a couple things. So I know I've been sick, so before we even get into anything, I want to get into why I'm this way. So if you guys don't know, you might know now, Facebook's trying to censor me all the time, so this video might get bumpy. But, if, um, if you guys want to know about Facebook the way it does, I am an influencer on TikTok, and I talk to kids on there all day long, and, um, Today while I was live, they wanted to see some cool makeup and stuff like that, so we did some cool makeup. They wanted to do some jewels and stuff, so that's what we did. I taught them how to do it. I taught them how to um, keep it going and all that good stuff, so um, that's that. So um, anyways, so let's go back to what we're here for right now. I, again, I know I'm sick, so sorry about my voice, but I was not going to go live today. I was supposed to go live at 2 o'clock, uh, like 11 o'clock this morning, but whatever. Whatever. Anyways, but this Hondura's crap is getting way too crazy and, and juicy to not talk about. To be honest with you, like, I don't love it. Like, I'm not, like, loving the drama. I'm, like, loving the shit that's going on. But, like, girl, like, this is some drama. Like, what the fuck? Like, holy shit. Like, this drama is too fucking deep for me. Okay, so, first of all, if you don't know what the Honduras thing is and what it's all about, let's go into it and let's um, talk about it for a second. So, the reason why... Um, the Andorras people want to get together and walk. Um, so they say is because they um, are not um, safe in Honduras. So they say that they want to go to America where they can seek asylum. So um, that's actually like a dumb common myth. I think that it's stupid that the media is even playing it off to be like that because there's videos already of um, them being handed money women and children be given money to do so. So let's watch one of the videos real fast I want to show you guys. So these people are being paid to come and do this. Like, this is in Honduras the day that started. But, sorry, let me fix this stupid camera from doing this automatic crap, this automatic editing. Let me zoom out. You guys see that? What they're doing is they're lining them all up. I don't know if you guys can read the words at the bottom there, but it says, there it is, and it says, um, they say, man, walk away, keep walking forward, women's voice, thank you, thank you, this way. They're paying women and children first, but they are paying people to go on this caravan to America. Now this is the day it started. Literally handing them money. And I wonder if that's, uh, to be honest with you, it doesn't specify, but I wonder if that's American money that they're handing them. Hmm. Seems a little planned, especially because they'll be arriving and this whole thing's happening right before midterms and right before the whole border, taking children away crap and the whole drama about like, oh, um, Trump and racism. And since he's already proven you wrong that he's not racist in so many different ways, I think that this is um, actually a tactic that the left is going to do in order to prove his racism because it's going to look really racist when we say we don't want 4,000 people here. So, you know, it's, it's really shitty. Um, this is a really shitty situation for everybody. And I, I feel even worse for the Hondurans because just like they don't know Democrats yet. They don't know how Democrats use their own people as ammo. So they're not even aware of what's going to happen. But what they don't know and that's really fucking sad is that these people are taking their children on these walks that are thousands of miles just to get to America to be turned away either by our military or be turned away by our border patrol. Whatever the case may be, they're not going to be just jumping on in. And they're going to have to face some really ugly realities. And already today... Speaking of ugly realities, today they made it, made it to the Mexican border. And at the Mexican border, they were met with the wall. For those of you who didn't know, I don't care who keeps calling it a fence, little media people that keep on trying to make it sound all sugar-coated and cute, but Mexico has a southern border wall. They always have. They had a wall. A southern border wall. Let that sink in. But um, I want you guys to know that um, they got through the wall. So, I, again, the reason why I keep on saying that this is a leftist ploy is because of the fact that people on the left are loving this. I find it very sad and disheartening that these families are going through this. I find it very sad, sad and disheartening that these families feel like they have to flee because there's no jobs there. There's no, nothing for their families to survive on there. So they feel like they can go to America. Who put that in their heads? Maybe the person handing them money and paying them. Maybe the person that's cheering on Facebook because they broke down the southern border wall of Mexico. 
the person who posts it today saying, which is a lot of the leftist politicians, saying, oh, see a wall, this is proof, this is proof that a wall will not work. If you knew what these families were going through right now, then I think that you'd feel a little bit worse about saying things like that. Because first of all, the American military, if we meet them at the border, we are not going to be as harsh on them as the Mexican military are being to them now. Now, people already, when they have the southern border wall, when people would jump it to Mexico from South America, Mexico, um, it wasn't the law to do this. And it's not in their rule books to do this, but they were doing this, and this was very public. They were shooting them. They were shooting people as they jumped the wall to go to Mexico. Why? Because the, Mexico does not like people going to the country that is not native to Mexico. Now, um, to put this in perspective for you, um, we think that it's so harsh here in America. Well, if you were to move to Mexico today and become a Mexican citizen, gain citizenship in everything, you will never be able to own land in Mexico. You can only own land in Mexico if you were born there. America doesn't sound so bad now, does it? So anyways, so now what they're doing is they're getting all these... What? My phone's like telling me something crazy. Whatever. Anyway, so now they're getting all these people to come and um, come down to America telling them that you could just seek asylum. First of all, asylum is something you have to apply for. Now, um, there is people in this group who are seeking asylum who do want to come here for that and for those reasons, which, again, um, my heart's open to that because I think that in America we are an alienation and we should take in people who actually need the help, will use the help, and can contribute to society in America. When we have a population coming down here in big groups like this, and 70% of them are underneath the poverty rate, doesn't that automatically make you think about the poverty that we already have here in America, especially in our southern border states like California, Arizona, Texas? I don't know. That's where the biggest homeless populations reside. I find that we, um, ignoring that, is, um, Ill, Ill, um, is an irresponsibility. How do you say that? Is it? irresponsible of the American people to ignore that because if we care about human beings in general and you don't want to start with the Americans I get it I get it I get it Democrats you don't want to start by saying we care about Americans first although I care about Americans first you want to say that we care about people so let's care about people in general look at the American homeless children population where's the biggest homeless population for children in America hmm we can ask Maxine Waters it's her district she should know all about it. The places you guys want these sanctuary cities are the places that we have the biggest poverty populations. And you guys are not even taking into account that these people are coming over 70% under the poverty line. How do you expect to feed these people? They think they don't find, have jobs and no food where they're living now? What are, what are we going to do? We can't even feed our own. Do you have a solution to that, socialists? Or do you just want to tax us more for that too? So, so... I just showed you guys the video about the money situation when they're handing them money to do this, which is very sad because they're not telling them the reality of the situation. They're just telling them, here's some money, go travel with this giant group, and you guys can get asylum. That's really fucking sad to me, that you guys would use your own people as ammo. So next, I want to go into the fact that Trump tried to stop it. Trump tried to stop it, and as you guys know, this morning we thought it, was, we thought it worked, we thought it was all great, because Trump threatened to... Um, Trump threatened to cut aid... For the um, for Honduras and for um, so Trump tweeted, oh, mind you, everybody said I heard his tweet. <sighs> when did the tweets become executive orders? First of all, second of all, United States has strongly informed the president of Honduras that if the large caravan of people heading to the U.S. is not stopped and brought back to Honduras, no more money or aid will be given to Honduras effective immediately. <coughs> I think that's great because Trump has done these tariffs on every single country and that's how we've gained our respect throughout the world to where also let's talk about some positives for a second. We are the, for the first time in eight years, weird, wasn't Obama the one who came in during that time? Weird. I thought Obama fixed us. Weird. He didn't? Oh, he didn't because the U.S. is world's most competitive economy for the first time in, decade, in a decade. So since we are the... Um, most competitive economy for the first time in a decade. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we are um, using instead of war and anger and um, kissing ass, we're using a lot of tariff tactics and business tactics on these other countries that are now maybe mad about it, but they still are respecting us now. Look at the UN. Look at all these other people. Look at this place, Honduras, who went ahead and what Honduras tried to do is they tried to stop the caravan all of a sudden. They were like, no, don't cut funding. That's the only money they got. Socialism. 
Socialism. Always pulling money from somewhere, aren't you? Little socialist. Anyways, so Honduras takes action against migrant caravan after Trump threatens to cut aid. But unfortunately, I think that they were a little bit too late. Honduras appeared to act quietly on Tuesday after President, um, President Donald Trump threatened to cut humanitarian aid to their country over a caravan of migrants who were traveling towards the U.S. No more money aid. After reports indicated that a caravan of more than 1,000 migrants, it's now 4,000, 4,000 migrants from Honduras were traveling to the U.S. border in hopes of t obtaining refugee status. The president spoke out against their trek, which, as he should have, as he fucking should have, um, that's insane. That's insane. If any of you Americans think that, you guys could just welcome 4,000 people. Uh, EDC. ED oh, imagine going to EDC, bitch. You hate sending the lines? Well, imagine bringing 4,000 people at the same time over that border in, in San Diego. Hmm. Where are you going to put them? How are we going to feed them? We do care about refugees. That's what I'm asking you. How do you want to do this? We probably shouldn't invite people over without having something to drink for them first, right? Like, you want to do that to your house. Like, would you invite 4,000 people up in your home? No? Then I thought this was our home. And we have plenty of homeless people in San Diego as is. I think we need to take care of them. We have plenty of people coming over illegally as is. We have plenty of people seeking asylum as is. And what you guys are actually doing, humanitarian left, you guys are actually watering down the people who actually need asylum. There's real people in real trouble who need asylum. And there's real people with children that are actually theirs who are actually fleeing a gang life, a um, political life out there that will kill them, a, um, a cartel life, a life that they need to seek asylum from. You're watering it down. You're making us not take it anymore. And do I blame us? No, because you guys keep screaming fucking asylum for every little thing when you don't even know what it takes to get asylum. I think it's pathetic. I think that you are doing it instead of what, you're, what you are calling to be humanitarian. You're actually being horrible to these people. Not only are you making them truck across countries, but you're watering down the asylum effect and you're going to make it to where Americans are going to be so tired of hearing about this, especially when we see 4,000 of them on our doorstep, especially when it's our children going to the border to, to protect it, our children that's in the military, our aunts and uncles in the military, our moms and dads in the military. You're going to piss people off. You're going to make people not take asylum seriously. You're going to make us all unbelievers of asylum and then the other half of you are going to still be like break down the borders like that half i can't even talk to you anymore like i just don't even want to say to them anymore. <laughs> but if there's any of you sensible people left on the left think about what you're actually doing here think about what you're supporting here i know it sounds good to just not look into things and quickly say we support people people are marching we should love them i get it but the world ain't rainbows and butterflies hunty that's not the way it fucking works here in the world you're dealing with second and third world countries. You're dealing with a country that governments went so under because of socialism that America has to fund them. The tiny bit of aid that they say that they don't get, the 4,000 people walking away from it right now, the only little bit of jobs that they do have are funded by us. And you want socialism here? Ha! Ah. Anyways, next. So like I said, they broke down the Mexico wall today. So seven hours ago, there was another update from, um, from Mexico. And Mexico, whoo let's see what Mexico has done. Mexico has um, made a lot of them seek asylum, which is good. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you this much. They went through the, they were going through the crowds right now, and they're finding out who can seek asylum and who can't. Now, um, the ones who can seek asylum, there are, let me see. Sorry, give me one second. I just had it. So one six seven, I think there's six hundred and let's see where is that. So there's like six hundred and forty. Don't quote me on the number yet. I want to get the number correct, so you guys don't fucking like try to twist it. Okay, so and I know it's in the six hundreds, but I'm gonna get you the exact number. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> So there's a U.S. bound caravan that was 3,000 migrants, which is now 4,000, just at 4,000. And they went through the group of uh, 3,000 when it was 3,000. And they're going through and figuring out which ones are going to be seeking asylum. And there's only 600 of them seeking asylum. And they're even given the number of how many women and how many children. Um, now U.S. Mexico, Mexico agrees on um, 
um, by members of Mexico President Enrique Pena, whatever. How, um, however, President-elect Andres, I can't even say his name, <laughs> Obrado's incoming administration has vowed not to criticize the plan, an official told Fox News. Why is he not like criticizing the plan when these people are rushing through his country? He's such an idiot. But anyway, so there's 600 people. I'm trying to find that number again. They're sending a lot. Oh my god, this is going to get so ugly, guys. If you guys do not see that this is going to get ugly, then I think that you might have a problem. <coughs> Let's see. Um, Come on. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get this right for you. Yeah, so um, they let about 600 of them seek asylum into Mexico. But that didn't even matter at all. Because what had happened at that point was um, they broke down the fence. And they said they're coming here anyways, regardless. So they're coming to the U.S. border. And I'm really nervous about what's going to happen. Um, I really hope that Mexico can do something because Mexico is not that small of a place. So I really hope that they do something about it soon. If not, um, you know, it's not going to end well. And I think it's fucked up that they're going to be putting all these people against each other when we don't even need to be against each other at this point. Come on. So most of them, I guess, I hear are still at the Mexican border now. But most of them got, a lot of them did get through and they broke down that wall. Um, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, the, um, they tried to seek asylum for some of them, so um, about 600 of them got to seek an asylum, and I think that that's um, a huge, huge red flag, because, mind you, it also is kind of a subtlety, like, to where it kind of makes me, like, a little bit more, like, at ease, because they only let 600, 600 of them seek asylum, but there's still 600 people seeking asylum. There's still 600 fucking people. Like, whoa. But, I mean, it's a lot less than 4,000, but it doesn't look like they're stopping the other... 4,000 people. So that being said, um, I'm really curious as to what happens, and I think that all of you guys really should pray for our loved ones here in the military. I think that all of you guys should pray for our country, and all you guys should um, wake up at this point and realize this is what you guys wanted when you guys didn't want a border. Mind you, I saw that there was a clip from NBC that was at the border last night, and they were at the border for about um, an hour and a half, and there was already four groups of people that they got um, while they were there interviewing the um, ICE officials. They literally had to stop interviewing and catch people to where the the guy on the news literally was like following the people as they were being arrested and stuff. So it's kind of creepy and crazy. But um, these um, these mules that are bringing these people across are not stopping at all or at any rate or not planning on it at all. So you people who want there to be no wall and no border, how do you guys feel about this? I want to know your opinions. And, and if you do feel that like this is great or something, I get it because you're like, oh, fuck Trump. Tell me how do you feel like we should take care of this? And how do you feel like we're going to be able to take care of all these people? Are you going to open up your doors? Are they going to go inside your homes? That's a lot of fucking people to be just chilling out on the streets in fucking California where I live. I'm just saying. Texas? Arizona? How do you guys feel about this? And do you think we should let them over here? And what do they do when they get here? Vote? You know, it seems kind of funny to me also that um, the left was pushing for the whole illegal vote thing, especially they, they're smart too, starting it in Georgia, like way away from the bo southern border. So they're starting to do this whole like talk and getting people in, and to the idea of like letting illegals go ahead and vote. And it's crazy to me that they're trying to get 4,000 people here right at midterms. And they're paying them to get here. And they're paying women and children, not the men. Who do we feel should not be separated at the border? Oh, women and children. Who should we feel oh, we should give asylum to? Oh, women and children. Who is the left prying on the most? Women and children. This all sounds really fucking fishy to me. It all sounds like it kind of connects everywhere. You leftists are that worried, bitch? Like, you need to find 4,000 people that aren't even from here to, like, vote for you? Like, that's crazy. And if you weren't thinking that, you're thinking it now. Fucking... Ugh. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. What you're putting these families through, what you're putting these countries through, what you're putting us through, um, and what the risks that are going involved with this in order to get your votes. Are you that fucking afraid that you lost? The worst that's going to happen to Republicans is we might be a little fucking equal around here. Oh no. 
your victim, victim Olympics is done. Looks like all you people who just got handouts, 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 because you were such victims, looks like it's time to put your work boots on like a normal American and get your ass to work. Get up. Don't say another fucking word, just get up and work. Do it. We live in an age these days when we have things like the internet, we have social media. We have been taught things from companies like Uber and WAG and all next door. All these apps that um, have told us, if you can't find a job, create one. We live in an age to where you can create something out of nothing. Everybody can be an entrepreneur. Everybody can be somebody. There's no fucking reason why you guys cannot do this yourselves. This whole systemic racism, this systemic, um, this, this, this systemicness of the poor people in America who are so wronged is bullshit. It's a myth. Last time I checked, the guy who started Uber was a college kid. Last time I checked, the guy who started Facebook was a college kid. Last time I checked, the people who are starting things like the, um, what's the other app where people go and they deliver food and shit? Um, it's called, um, babe, what is it called? That app where you go deliver food, they go to grocery stores for you? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? You people don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Google it, bitch. But I'm just telling you guys, people that start these apps are young fucking people like you and me. The person who started WAG is a young entrepreneur, a young kid who thought walking dogs would be a good fucking after school activity. Like, there's no excuse for any of you motherfuckers to not be able to handle this life. And don't tell me Y'all ain't got the phones, and y'all ain't got the internet, and y'all ain't got the Wi-Fi, bitch, because you're too poor. Because that's some bullshit. Because even Obama made it to where homeless people have phones. Don't lie to me, bitch. You go to Starbucks, it's free Wi-Fi. Go to, go to fucking McDonald's, you should, I should be applying when you're sitting at those tables. But, just saying, they have Wi-Fi. Like, nowadays, you don't have a job, you can create a job. So what more victimhood do you want? What more handouts do you want? I don't understand. Can somebody clarify that for me? I know what the 4,000 people you're trying to get to trek through the fucking desert to get here to do is to vote for you. I get it. Cute. Whatever. Do you guys not see what your leaders are doing to you? Do you not see what your leaders are doing to us? They tore us apart. Not me. Not you. Not the Republicans. The left tore us apart. And when they can't tear us apart, they tear up your own party into different factions and groups. It's kind of fucking disgusting. I'm sick of it. So, what do you guys think about this whole caravan thing? I'm really curious to find out you guys' opinions of it. So, I'll go ahead and leave in comments down below and I will go ahead and read them and I will see some stuff. But I don't want to just keep this all such a negative um, topic and such a negative talk. So, I want to talk about a couple of good things. First good thing I do want to talk about is something that's super important to all of us and that should be important to every single one of you. If you say it's not important to you, then go back to sleep. But the U.S. is world's most competitive economy for the first time in a decade. Who? What was the only within that decade that was a change I mean was it the time that we mistake mistake skin color for progress was it the one time that we said that it wasn't racism even though we were celebrating his skin color as if he would like did something Obama maybe I don't know I don't know I don't know, I don't know. who knows who knows but all I know is that that motherfucker was in office and it, we lost it. We lost it. He dropped the ball. But Trump picked it back up, so thank God. The U.S. is back on top as the most competitive country in the world, regaining the number one spot for the first time since 2008 in an index produced by the World Economic Forum, which said the country could still do better on social issues, of course, because our social issues definitely need to be handled. But let me tell you, the government can't really fix that. Put whoever you want in office, homie. They can change the way you look at each other walking on the street. America climbed one place in the rankings of 140 countries with the top five rounded out by Singapore, Germany, Switzerland, and Japan. All five countries scored rose from 2017 with the U.S. notching the second biggest gain after Japan's. The top spot hasn't gone to the U.S. since the financial crisis stalled output and triggered a global economic slowdown. Economic recovery is well underway, with the global economy projected to grow almost 4% in 2018 and 2019, says the report, published Tuesday by the organization that produces the Davos Conference on Global Politics and Economics. However, recovery remains vulnerable to a range of risks and potential shocks. Hmm, I wonder if 4,000 people could be a potential risk or shock to our economy, who knows? Hmm. The authors warned, they cite a brewing trade war between the U.S. and China as a possible, 
hindrance to growth that could potentially derail the recovery and deter investment. The U.S. has levied tr tariffs on a total of $250 billion of Chinese goods, and China has retaliated with tariffs of $110 billion of U.S. exports as the two nations spar over trade imbalances and other issues. Well, let me tell you something. When two people have a disagreement, it's normal for them to sit down and try to bargain out that agreement, try to come to a fucking consensus. Now, it doesn't come easy. You don't just sit down and say, this is what we're going to do, and they say, okay, yeah, let's do that. No. <laughs> Bitch. But all I can say is that America was being way, 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 way mistreated when it comes to the equality of the tariffs that were going back and forth from China to America. <coughs> so Trump is doing whatever he needs to do to make sure that we at least get some equality or at least some fucking something. We're sick of paying for the world. Okay? We are done. Don't complain about your fucking economy at home as you guys are asking us to pay for the world, bitch. And then you still want to tax us more? Like, what the... <laughs> bitch, wake up, leftist. Anyways... So that being said, yes, they, with China, they are going through a little thing right now, but is it going to be bad? No. As we have realized and we've seen projectively through everything Trump has done so far, every single thing you guys is going to be war and crazy. Every single thing has turned out to be peaceful, nice, and very cooperative. Did we just sit down with North Korea and make good with them and it just all was good? No. It took a couple of means, didn't it? Well, these tariffs are coming from China. It's taking a couple of pushbacks from both sides, and both countries are superpowers. Both countries want to be the big dogs. So I don't think it's going to go to. I don't think it's going to be pushed as far enough to go to war. Because I think that would already happen. I think that um, the fact that we are almost equal, we we are pushing 250 billion tariffs, and they're pushing 110 billion. I think that that's closer to as um, equality as we've ever been with them with our tariffs. It seems how they were um, charging us up the ass 25 percent more. I think that this is great, actually. I think it's amazing. So um, these tariff things, don't let the left make you think that we're going to be going to war with China. I think that we are settling things slowly but surely. I think that we are playing a game of tug of war at the moment. Yes. So what makes you think throwing 4,000 more people on top of us is going to make it any better? Just wondering. And the thing with China, did you feel great about the fact that you can make a toothbrush here in America and send it to China? And they were only being charged like 0.2%. And then with we want a toothbrush from China being sent here, it's going to be 25% of that, like 25% more. 25% of the total cost it made zero sense. Now, how many, how many of you guys at home order from the app Wish or from the app um, Amazon or order from any fucking app or any fucking internet source? Well, you probably order from China. And do you ever have to, if you have Wish, we all know the pain of Wish, like we have to wait for weeks for your shit to come. You like forget about it and then it's like come, it comes as like Christmas. Yeah, those things. Those things are the things you're being taxed so much on. That's why when you buy something on Wish, you buy it for $2, but to send it over here is $1.50. Learn your economics, guys. You don't have to take a class to know what's right and wrong. And the fact that America was paying out the ass and they were paying nothing is wrong. So, yeah, we have the right to be equalized with the world. We are, I get it, we put ourselves in a position of being quote-unquote world policing, but that doesn't mean we're world mothering. We do not need to take care of everybody. We could be there for people and humanity, but we do not need to take care of every single person. Had we been treated fairly by the UN or had we been treated fairly by every other fucking country in the world and we all were kind of equalized, maybe we wouldn't be so pissed off that 4,000 people were trying to storm our fucking border. Just saying. But at the same time, maybe we wouldn't have so many homeless veterans. At the same time, maybe we wouldn't have so many homeless children. At the same time, Maxine Waters, maybe we would have a leg to stand on as opposed to just standing on her only district being the most biggest homeless population in America. Second fucking biggest, um, they said, needle found on ground per square mile per capita. Yeah, let that sink in. That's a lot of math. I get it. Some of you people won't catch up, keep up with that. But needles, dirty needles on the floor, like heroin, drugs, bad things. Yeah, on the floor. In the same place that we have the biggest homeless population of children in America. Maxine Waters. Yeah, that cough, that's all I hear instead of coughs. Anyways, so um, that being said, so those are the potential shocks that we're having, and so everybody's afraid of the whole China thing, but don't let everything distract you from the progress we're making, you guys. We are finally the world's most competitive economic force for the first time in decades. Well, in a decade. I'm not going to pretend like we weren't when Bush was in, but um, let's all be real about the whole Obama, Slobama, Obama. 
your little savior there. He may have told all the um, minority groups and everybody that we're cool. But let me tell you, if we have um, really, if he has made us go so far in this world, why did he take away our um, stride to be the biggest competitive economic force? Why did he also drop more bombs in our nation's history? Why did he also send home more illegals in our nation's history? And why the fuck, if we are so suppressed, are we forgetting that he was the president the past eight years? How do we get to this point? How do we get so bad if he is such a savior? If the Democrats know so much about fixing the whole country and fixing the world, so what have you guys been doing the past eight years? You were the ones in charge. Why are we so low? And you guys can't say it's because of Trump, because we all know what happened when he got in office. Shit got better for everybody. So your bullshit lies has got to stop. When you Stop coughing, go away. When are you gonna face reality? When are you gonna fucking face the facts that, what facts are facts? When are you gonna face what is not facts? When are you gonna face fucking the truth that your party has lied to you? Your party was my party, your party was our party. I'm a homo, do you see what I look like, bitch? Like, that was my party too, I loved it. I loved being able to say I stick up for everybody. And I loved being able to say I still do. I loved being able to say that I was all inclusive and I was fucking tolerant. I loved being able to say I still do. Can you say the same thing? And if you think you can say the same thing, well, how do you feel about gay Trump supporters? Hmm, there's your answer. So before you guys ruin, uh, you're getting you ruined your party, so please stop trying to ruin the country. And if this whole caravan thing is just a way and employ for you guys to get votes, it's horrible that what you're doing to those people. If it's a way for you guys to say, fuck you to Trump, can't you guys just fucking flip him the bird or tweet him or something? Why do you just have to make it hell for all of us? That's like Jerry Brown making California horrible for all of us residents because of the fact that he wants to throw a fit to Trump. Yeah, this is getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. And if we leave California, cute, cool, dandy, but if you bring all this shit to America, bitch, like, I hope the left never gets, never gets a seat again. I hope you guys never are in office again. Not until all these guys clean it up, which I don't see happening within the next decade. Even if you do clean it up, just at least to the point where you guys can be cleaning up to be in office again, like you were with Obama, let me tell you something. Our economy went down. Our lives went down. When Clinton was a president, not only was he a whore, but also we sent to jail, to prisons, the most black men in our nation's history for the most petty crimes. We filled our prisons with African-American males and women. We realized that the women prison system became an industry, a $2 billion industry at that time. Then we get, we got, and after that, we go straight to Bush. And Bush, I get it. We don't got to talk on that one. We get it. We get it, bitch. We get it. We get 9-11. We get Bush. We get all that shit. All right there. And that blah, 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 blah. We get it. He was not the best person ever. Um, and then we get Obama again. And then down goes the economy again. More people go to prison again. More people are killed again. He let in, wait, his own words, more illegals in our nation's history he sent home. He was making America great by getting rid of all of the illegal immigrants. In fact, he sent more home than Trump can even dream of. Was 130,000 per year? Obama did that. Check Snopes. Check your check your sources if you don't believe me. So, um, that being said, if you guys even get relevant enough to even be in office again, that still scares me because of, due to what the country has had to go through when you guys are presidents, when we have the Democrats in office, this country goes through turmoil when it comes to our minority groups, goes through turmoil when it comes to our um, our gays and our, and our African Americans, our Mexicans, our, our um, asylum seekers, our um, documented, our, um, our American middle class. They get forgotten about in the midst of all that hatred towards the people that voted for you. All the people that you're kissing their ass now saying you're going to stand up for them as you're pissed off that the Republicans took office. All the Republicans are doing are cleaning up your fucking mess, man. If you can't see that, it's kind of crazy. Like, not kind of crazy. I think it's it's beyond crazy. It's just not normal. It's, this is not, like, I like I'm in Twilight Zone sometimes. So anyway, so um, I also want to say that Trump manufacturing jobs, boom, 10 times Obama's over 21 months. Ooh! Bitch, that was deep. But that one is actually from Forbes magazine. Like, that's kind of cute. Um, he... Manufactured jobs 10 times more than Obama did in just 21 months. Obama was here how many years, bitch? Well, we can't forget the fact that when Obama got in office, this white room, we lost, we lost our spot up at the top three of the economic forces in the world, but now we're back to number one. Be happy. Let's see. Um, 
like, what else do you guys want to know? Um, oh, yeah, the Clinton Foundation. Soros, of course, has something to do with this, of course. So Julian Assange, as ISIS and Clinton Foundation are both funded by Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Weird. Strange. Not surprised. Terrorists are terrorists. Whether their name is Clinton or Hajib, it doesn't fucking matter. Terrorists are terrorists. And um, we already knew this about Hillary, so I don't know why they're making it news now. I think it's cute that they're like trying to tell us right before the midterms are coming up. But if you are on the right and you didn't know this, bitch, learn today. But I'm, I'm assuming that if you're on the right, you probably do know this about the Clintons. They've always um, received money from them. As you guys know, Obama was the one supporting, giving them guns and stuff like that to ISIS. So we already knew all that. So if this is just a reminder to vote red, bitch, we don't need it. Thank you, Independent, for your um, news article. But we will be voting red. And I hope most of you do too. If you are a minority, especially if you're a minority, your party is using you as ammo. If you are black and you marched in Black Lives Matter and you didn't see progress in your neighborhood, vote red. If you are gay and you marched and you didn't see progress within our community, vote red. If you are a woman and you fought and you went to jail even, or you got really pissed and you marched about the whole sexual assault victims, and feminism, vote red. Because you know who doesn't give a fuck about you marching? The party who told you to march. The same party who doesn't give a fuck about 4,000 people marching through two countries with children and babies. Outside, the open air, with nothing but a backpack and a baby. tells you that they love you, that they're there for you, and the same party who tells you how evil the Republicans are. I've never felt more at home. I was scared about going to the Republican side too, but when I got there, it's just home, like they're just so nice people. And there's so many Christians who are quick to tell me, remind me that I'm not that kind of Christian. I would not judge you. Like any of you guys can come here with your hate and they will shut it down with love. It's really hard to be mad at them and stay mad at them, to be honest. Like I got mad at the Christian communities. And I'm like, Christians, let's talk. But they're so good. They're such good people. It's crazy. Like, crazy. So, um, I did take a, a couple of screenshots about some things. Let's see if they're over here now. So, I just want to talk about a couple of um, people on the right that I have um, that have kind of inspired me that I've talked to recently that are just really overall good people, and they've really um, went out of their way to support me. And, um... So um, these are some of the letters and some of the things that I get told by these people, some of the um, things that they message me or um, privately or comment to me. One of them is this. Um, it, um, I told people, get a red hat. And my friend Martin Rickert, he was watching earlier. He said, you will see me with one soon, Christopher. I showed my daughter your videos. She is my princess and loves makeup. She thinks you're great. And um, then he sent me even a picture of him and his wife. He said, my wife and I, right before I retired from the army in 2013, not much has changed except gained a little weight. So, I mean, they're really awesome people. Like, they're not afraid to show who they are. They're not afraid to show their families. They're not afraid to show the love that they have for other people. And this is an army veteran. And um, he supports me 100%. And I think that's really awesome. He actually likes my videos. They find it comical. They find it entertaining. But at the same time, they also see the seriousness in it. And they see the love and the heart behind it. So those kinds of things are the things that make it all matter. So I'm going to go to my messages right now. And I'm going to show you guys some of the things that people say because... You guys should see the love on the right, and I'm, then I, I don't think I have to go into the, um, the hate from the left. I think we did that in a previous video. And if you guys want to see some more hate, go back about three videos, and you guys will see what the hate has done to some of the members in the Republican Republican Party. But um, I want to show you guys some of the um, love I do get from these people. So let's see. Oh, that was really nice. I actually just got one just recently. So somebody asked me, um, I don't, the private messages, I'm not going to say the names of the people because I don't want to do that because I don't know if they want to be um, outed or not. I think that's why they probably messaged me, but let's go and talk. One of them says, hey, Chris, I was just watching one of your videos, and then all of a sudden I became curious to what you think about gender in terms of binary and non-binary and two or multiple ones. Just your opinion in total. So I told him my opinion in a video, and he says, thanks for letting me know what you thought about the topic. I agree with you a lot, um, a lot of what you say. Some things I think I... I think differently, but that's um, what America is about. Look at that. First thing he says, some things I didn't think differently, but that's what America is about. And so um, he recently was kicked out of a class. I don't want to go too into his story, but he was kicked out of a class, and he's like a um, he's a 
He's really high up in this class that he's in, in the committee, and he is getting kicked out of it in college because he does believe that there's only two genders. He doesn't believe transsexuality is not a real thing. I believe it's a real thing too, but we think that that's a verb. It's like something when you're transitioning to another sex. But he um, definitely thinks the same thing, and he's getting um, to be kicked out of the class, all these crazy things, and other organizations and stuff, and it's really fucked up that people on the left are going to do that to him just because he simply would not go along with their... Um, their uh, mentality of their made up beliefs that there's three genders. I don't care what kind of species you are, whether you're a plant or an animal, there are only two genders. That's the way the world works. I'm sorry that's not any other way, but that is the way the world works. Next one, um, let's see. Thanks. Check, um, uh, this person wants to send, she said, I want to send um, letters to Michael, which is, if you guys, again, when I was talking about the hate video I did, about the hate comments I got um, about three videos ago. There was this boy, Michael, who went to the hospital and everybody was sending me letters and stuff like that. In fact, I have some more to send out to his family. Here's some of them, three more. And I have a whole bunch of them coming from Texas right now, so I'm gonna send them all together on Monday. But um, she said, thanks, um, I would love to send out some letters. Um, check with the family first, um, I'm, I'm in. I've never done a large scale card movement, not even certain if you cut that, but it, it is, it, it, but it, but it is be honored. Resend me your address with zip code and I'll um, send the cards. Um, so she was sending cards in order to, and she was telling people about, about it in some of the groups and stuff like that so she can get people to send cards to Michael, letting him know that he's loved and he, there's no reason to, for him to be suicidal, which is a beautiful thing. Um, let's see, there's more things here. Let's find, there's actually, I don't know, to look far. <clears throat> Thanks for accepting my friend request. Um, I think you're awesome. I think you're amazing. I think that you are a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much for being you. That one was great. Um, let's see. Another person. Hi, I'm a conservative Christian and Republican, and I applaud, <coughs> I applaud you for standing up for your political views. Welcome to the party who actually practices tolerance and love. I apologize for the idiots who sent you hate, as that is not what conservatives and especially Christians should do. You're a strong person, and I like your style. Love your hair. Signed, a middle-class 59-year-old former liberal Democrat. I walked away in my late 20s because even then, the hate from the left was bad. Plus, I went from pro-abortion to pro-life after having a child who wasn't just a blood of tissue. Just a blob of tissue, sorry. That was, that's another really good message I just got out of the blue. Another person says, thanks for the ad, Trump 2020. Woo! So I never replied to them, so I'm replying now. They're probably watching, hi. Let's see another one. Um, th these are so great, you guys. Um, somebody sent me flowers and said, to the prettiest lady I know. <laughs> ah, thanks, bitch. <laughs> Let's see, uh, let's find another one. Well, this person's really awesome. They sent me, they said, I wanna see your videos. Um, <laughs> I'm waiting for your video to pop up. Hope you like being called a funky unicorn, but you're, you're a cool funky unicorn. So this person called me a funky unicorn. Um, I think they're, they're really awesome, they're really fun. And um, they think I'm great too. And again, I've changed their minds into um, being more accepting towards people, which is a, a huge stride and of progression that we all keep talking about, that we have so much, that we want to have so much. So I think that it's finally happening. I think that it's important to talk about these things as they happen. Um, so let's see. Oh, I'm getting so many conversations with these people that they're so good. Like they're so, these people are so great. So said, did they block you on Facebook? Oh no, I couldn't find you. Oh wait, I found you. That was a good one too. Um, let's see, um, let's see. A fellow deplorable from Australia in peace sign. So I said, hi. He said, hope you're well, mate. So that's another person of support. Um, let's see. Hey, I saw your video on Sarah Sanders' group, and that dude comments next time tag me, and I will take him out of the group. I just saw it and took his comment out. Thank you so much. That's really that means a lot to me. That some of the group um, authorities are actually coming to my aid, which is awesome, because as you guys see, some people in these groups don't listen to my video and they just see one thing and they hate me. Somebody else. I just saw one of your videos. I was very impressed. I love that you speak your mind. Blessed be. And I mean, we can go on all day. Thank you for the ad, and thank you for everything that you are doing. From another person, from David Hagen. I said I was gonna say name, sorry. Oops. <laughs> Anyways, let's see, um, there's more. Look, you don't know me. And this person says, look, you don't know me, but I saw your video and you are awesome. I am very Christian, but how you live your life is your own, not mine, and thank you for all that you do. These are from, coming from Christians, guys. Like, these are coming from Christians, and that's another one, so let's go in. I'm not even going far, I'm just going down to the very next one. Let's see, um, oh, so I almost want to say names, but I can't. Hey, do you live in the LA area? Just curious. I obviously can't read, 
Hello, Mayo, because he actually saw my, he went to go look at my about me after that. He was sorry. He was Huntington, so cool. Thank you for all you're doing. Let's see another one. People are sending me clap hands. Um, I think I'm in love. My sister came out 35 plus years ago and lost her job at Executive Suites in Long Beach. When she met, when she met it slip, when she let it slip that um, she's conservative, how conservative she is. So it's not just you, hun. Your eyes look amazing. Thank you so much. That was a nice, another nice one. I, I haven't got no hate ones in a minute, actually. I'll be honest with you guys. I haven't been getting hate ones in the past like three or four days. Another one. I admit that I admire that you are so involved politically, but sometimes when I read your post, the context identifies a problem that proceeds to attack hate and more hate and opposition. Only sometimes because I read your post and I do support some ideas. So please don't think I'm trying to come for you, but I read your post and some come off aggressive and I don't think you're an aggressive person. I think for hot topics or more opinionated statements, I'd like if you would propose more solutions as problems arise so we can get rid of bigotry and intolerance. That's all. And this is coming from another um, gay person who um, is not really on the left or the right, but they gave me that friendly advice. And did I get mad about that? I did not. I told him, I said, I hear ya. I guess my aggression comes into play through the hate that I've been given. I went from being extremely involved in the OC gay community to throwing events and charities to running for Michigan OC. And just like that, with one vote, I was ostracized, slandered, assaulted, and my house vandalized, and my, um, and my whole life gone. Um, so I guess I let my feelings get the best of me. I'm really sorry for that. I will take your advice. I know it comes from a true and good place. It sucks going from um, hosting some of the biggest events in Orange County to all of a sudden being nothing the very next year. So it's been rough as fuck, and that's where my aggression comes in. I miss having friends, but the lives I help and change from my platform is bigger than me and worth it. Thank you, though. And so he put hearts. So um, see, those are these are good conversations that people could be having. So this is just one example of very, very many. But anyways, I just wanted to go on there and show you guys the difference between the left and the right. Because if you guys want to see the left comments I get, go to three videos ago. Like I said, you guys put one boy in the hospital. You guys are putting many, many more against the rights. And you guys are making people afraid to come out and speak when they vote for people like Trump. So um, that's the um, all-inclusive, all-tolerant, speak your mind left. That's silencing, hating, separating, and making us be, live in fear. The rights, as you guys can see from these comments, are not the same thing. If you are on the left still, you are told the right is the mean, intolerant, horrible, non-inclusive, angry ones, right? I just proved to you they're not. These are strangers from all across America that keep messaging me, and I only read to you a couple of them. And like I said, I have cards for another little boy that um, is watching my videos. I help bring their family together because the little boy didn't understand why he was androgynous. He thought that he had to be on left because he simply was androgynous, but that's not the case at all. I showed him that you can be gay and still be on the right and it made him and his whole family come together. So that's a beautiful thing. So um, all these good things, all these good things since I've been on the right and all these good things coming out of the right, all these good things since we've been in office, all these good things for America, all these good things, all these good things, all these good things. I can't really see how any of you on the left stand on your firm ground anymore of hate. What hate is on the right? I, if anybody's just sniff it out, but just me, I will find it and I will fucking out it. In the beginning of my video making, I was outing right, I was outing left, I was outing hypocrisies on both sides. As we come closer to things like the election, as we come closer to things like um, just realizations of what's going on. I think Holly Jenner was onto something when she said, this is the year about like realizing stuff. <laughs> well, the bitch was kind of right because it's we're realizing stuff. And the ones who aren't realizing stuff are trying not to. It's just crazy. It's, a, it's become a verb. It's becoming something you're trying not to do. And um, I've searched through the whole right to find the bad. I think there's bad in everything. There's bad and good in everything. But I don't search just only for the bad. But I was looking for the bad because that thing is good. I thought, are they putting on a mask? Are they trying to show me that? Um, are they trying to do this in spite of the Democrats? Are they trying to be like, let's prove that we're actually good people, even though they're really bad people? No. I just have yet to come across somebody bad. And the ones you guys do see, I argue with um, from the right on the comments in my videos, you guys will see it always ends with them apologizing publicly. And it's insane to me. Like... The amount of, like, whoa to me is insane. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video, but I wanted to let you guys know, also, people who have helped me um, to raise money to get to D.C. for Walk Away, I obviously am not going to be able to go because I didn't raise enough money, but what I am going to do is obviously put it on tomorrow, so just know that I am going, I was going to go today, but I'm too damn sick, so I decided to be on Musical.ly with kids instead and talk about positivity and um, about how labels are not important. So um, that was a little bit more fulfilling today to do. I'm, as you guys can tell, I'm not as sick as I was yesterday, so I'm feeling a lot better, so I think I'm going to go to Politicon tomorrow instead. But um, I want you guys to know that all the money that I don't spend at Politicon will be donating to Walk Away. 
So um, thank you guys all for your support. Thank you guys all for everything you guys have done for me, for making this new home for me, for letting me know that I can be here for good now, for um, letting so many others like me come to the, the right. And um, for those men who are a part of the right, who are just so, we're not used to that yet, I don't hate you for your opinions of me and I'm not like fretting on the fact that you're scared of my look. Um, I do have this to say though, I'm not going anywhere so you might want to get used to me sooner or later and although it's not going to be easy for you, it'll be beneficial for all of us. So I'm going to go guys, but bye and just remember when you guys think about this caravan thing, don't just think from labels perspective and don't just think, oh my God, people are in need. We need help people. Think about what's actually happening here. Think about the payments that they're getting to get here. Think about the asylum people that you're bringing here. And think about the fact that you're watering down asylum seekers who are real victims who really need you, need us. Think about the fact that our younger generations who are now here in asylum, asylum, asylum. I never heard about asylum until I was older. But all these younger generations here in asylum, asylum, asylum. When they're in our place, when they're the adults, when they're the ones running ICE, when they're the ones running the government, you want them to take asylum seriously. You want it to be watered down to whether it's like ADHD where we don't fucking think of it as a real thing. So people like me who have ADHD suffer. Don't instill suffering and claim it to be acceptance and love. That's it for now, guys. Bye. Sorry about my nasal self and my beautiful face. I'm not sorry about my beautiful face. Just kidding. Bye, bitches.